YouTube videos, different like hand sewing tutorials for something called a running stitch and a back stitch. So really, if you've ever like weaved before, it's kind of like you're doing this motion through the fabric and then you pull it through. It's not that hard, but it, it takes some practice if you've never done it before, but it's really not that hard. You can do it, I promise. Um, but I will say a little recommendation for thread and needles. So this is the sewing needle that I like to use the most often. And if you can tell, the hole in the needle is quite long. And this is a particular type of needle. This is a, oh, what's the word? Hang on. Oh, darning. D-A-R-N-I-N-G darning needle. It's a little bit thicker. I don't really like the super, super tiny, like pinhole tiny needles where it's like super hard to put your thread through. I don't enjoy that, but this particular pack of needles, they all have that like longer entryway for the thread to go in. So I prefer those. Although you don't want it to be too thick of a needle. Like this. You don't want the needle to be this big because this one is blunt on the end. This one is more for like a weaving project. Whenever there are um, like strings through it and it, it almost looks like a, uh, a harp, the instrument harp. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like a weaving needle. And it would not work very well because it's going to make a huge hole in the fabric, especially depending on like what kind of fabric you use. So the, I find the smaller needles work a little bit better. Okay, let's keep on going. <laughs> so uh, for this one, I used, like I said, craft paint, acrylic paint. This one is a warm white, warm white, and the brand doesn't really matter all that much. I find, well, I'm gonna, that's kind of a lie. I feel like the one that has the apple on it from Walmart, I forget the name of it, that one feels a little bit cheaper and a little bit more like chalky and will peel off, but this deco brand, deco art, or the ones that are like slightly more money, like they're not the 50 cent one, but they might be like a dollar twenty-five. That might be worth your investment. If you're gonna be painting on fabric, just to get like a little bit of better paint than just 50 cents, but you could, you know, whatever. Do do you boo, do you? And then I also used this paint. This one is from Michael's Artist Loft, and this is like a pearlescent one. This is iridescent medium, so uh, this is an acrylic paint as well, but it's very, very shiny. I don't know if you can tell on camera. I don't, I don't know if you really can all that much, but it is very shiny. Almost like a highlighter, you see? It's really pretty. And whenever I like to do my clouds, I like to tap in just a little bit of it. Just wiping my finger off. You probably won't be able to tell on camera, but it's like just the lightest wash of some sparkly, just to add a little, you know, holiday cheer and glisten and joy up in here. So that is this one. Now you can definitely do different ones and experiment like like I said you can do like a lace ribbon you can do one like this you can do a thinner one you don't have to make it huge like that and let me keep showing you all what else we've got okay so the next one is this cloud Thank you. 
is using oh y'all this mic is messing me up um this is the same fabric as this one but this is what it actually looks like on the outside so you could play around with texture and do different textures but the same shape things like that would be really cute but i really like this cloud because it doesn't take much time or effort and i didn't even create a template on a piece of paper for this one i just kind of like cut and did it intuitively and then i used this lighter wash denim on the top for this one so they look super cute together i'll show them all together at the end and i just like to hand sew the little thing onto here i mean i could put it like inside and then sew over the top but i actually like it this way because whenever i'm making it it's almost like i'm sculpting and i like the shape better on one side than the other like to me that doesn't that almost looks like a dog oh, it's kind of cute but this gives more like the dimension right here that I kind of want so I want this to be the front so if I were to sell these or give these away or whatever I would want people to like use that as the front you know what I mean so cutie little cloud you could do that you could make a a dog bone I thought that might be a cute idea or something related to your pet and you could always like embroider their name or like just something cute like that on it or you could do an anniversary date a you know, a special year, like established in blah, 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 or whatever you want to do. Okay, so there's the cloud. And now onto the next ornament. We have this cute little evil eye that I made. I really like this one a lot. It didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to, but, you know, it's always trial and error because for this one, I did sew it so that you don't see any of the edges. And then I, like, hand sewed up here, so that's why it looks a little more, like, weird. But it originally was a little bit bigger with the blue. But whenever you have to, like, flip it inside out to put the stuffing inside of it, it shrinks up a little bit and I didn't really account for that because I made these with the stitch on the outside edge right there and this one is not that way but I love it I used the same white fabric this is the light denim and then of course the darker denim and then this is a soft kind of velvety material and then I used this same vintage little ribbon, which I think gives it a very like hippie boho type of flair to it. So I'm loving this one a lot. So cute. sad. 
Hobby Lobby and it's just gold. And I got this in the little like embroidery floss section. Now I will say it's kind of annoying because it splits like that very, very much, you know, like this. So you kind of have to like pinch it together and like make sure all of them are going in the needle at the same time. And it's not as soft as embroidery floss thread, which is all of these. These are going to be easier and more like beginner friendly to work with if you've never sewn something before. That can be nice because they don't break really easily, but with those you do want to, whenever it comes like this, like how this one has three, that kind has six threads. So what you're going to want to do is split it in half so that you just have three. That makes it a lot easier to work with and you don't like waste as much. So you're kind of getting like double the amount, you know what I mean? And you could also just sew with a typical spool of thread, like a thinner, a thinner thread like that. But this can break more easily and it doesn't really have as much grip as the embroidery floss does and this one doesn't have much grip at all because it's so like shiny and slippery so it's just kind of a weird like fine line thing to kind of like figure out but like you can make it work with just experimentation and like trying things you know so is that it oh you're also gonna need of course this is like the most unorganized video the most unorganized video i apologize some of these little pins because when you're cutting out your fabric you don't want it to slip and slide especially whenever you're working with a shape and you're cutting a shape you want them to not be uneven obviously so it's okay if it's off a little bit it's hard to get things exact you can always trim up the edges but just to put these little pins in here to hold it kind of in place and then you can also use these little quilters clips quilter quilters clips to hold the edges even more precisely whenever you're getting ready to go ahead and sew now I never had these until I started making my bucket hats so it's definitely not a necessity but I would say some of these pins are a necessity because I don't know how else you're going to make it so that it doesn't shift around. So, this is like the before of the cutie little dove. So whenever I sew it, I just kind of start up here and then go all the way around. And then I like to leave like this much space, like the top of the head, so that I can stuff it. And then I can hand sew it shut or sewing machine it shut which is what I did for all of these ones, just so that it could keep that clean kind of line. Now, if you guys want, like, sewing tutorial stuff more in depth, and we can just, like, work on one piece together, we can totally do that. Although I've been wanting to make a Patreon type of situation for, like, art stuff and, like, a bunch of miscellaneous things, but it's just so many, like, working parts that I need to think through and figure out, so, like, be patient with me friends I love you all but yeah I can do that over there I can do that here so that's the tea and then oh yeah duh paint brushes if you're gonna want to try like the cloud type of situation it really doesn't have to be anything crazy this doesn't even look like as good of clouds as it could have been because the type of fabric really absorbs the paint really quickly and it's not very easy 
super, super compact because the color is going to deposit very much in one spot and be very hard to blend. I also don't necessarily recommend using like a very shaped like square brush either, although the density of this one is a lot more like in alignment with what I would use, you know, but you just do more like stippling, like brushing, like very much like this motion. You're not really like painting a cloud, you're just kind of like working it up and blending it like that and like rubbing a little on the edges with the excess. So that's kind of how I achieved that look. But for that cloud one, I actually used this brush and it worked just fine. It was kind of taller, the bristles are a little looser, but they're very much like in the middle. It's not like super compact, but it's also not super thin. So and it's really soft and flexible, so maybe that's something to look for. But you also don't want the brushes that are super, super long and like skinny because then it's more like a precision brush and that's not the type of like look that you want to go for if it's a cloud, so. Okay. I think that is going to be it for today's video. Let me go ahead and hold up all of these ornaments for you guys just to get one last of all the goodies. I feel like it's going to be super hard to hold all these. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? I was wanting to like attempt to make a thumbnail. You guys, I'm so raw and real and authentic on this channel. video.